Hey, hey, everybody. As you know, I'm working on these journals that I'm going to be donating here in another couple of weeks. And one of the things I'm working on are the journal covers. I thought you guys might be interested in seeing how I am doing those. But before I show you how I've been putting the covers together, I want to show you what my signatures look like. And we may go ahead and change up some of the pages really quick while we're on camera. So with that in mind, <laughs> I hope I can get it all done in the time frame that I have. But we'll just get started. And if not, we'll just roll into another video and you can watch it next time. Okay, so go ahead and get yourselves comfy, and right after the intro, we will be back to work on these journal covers. Well, I thought I would show you how much I've gotten done so far. I have picked out the fabrics and things for the covers and tried to coordinate them with the signatures. And I've gotten the signatures assembled up to a certain point. So let me show you one of them. They're all very similar. And then you can kind of get the idea of what's going on. So first I had a page from a floral garden book. I think that's what it was. Now I can't remember what it was called. And then I had a printed page an envelope, it's either going to be white or gold depending on the colors of the pages inside. Then a page from a nature book. And then somewhere in the arrangement, just depending on where it fit the best, I added one of the Ukrainian children's book pages. So this one happens to have it right here, but they're not all in the same place. Then I have a doodling page. Then I have one of the pages that we did together, the tabbed index pages. Then a page from a needlepoint book. Some are in color, some are black and white. A stationary page. It's a printer copy paper. Then a sheet of scrapbook paper, but it's this also is different in each, each uh, journal that I did. And then a page of music, and some look like this, and some are a different style, but there's music there. A vellum sheet, because I just like to add, well actually this one I think is, tracing paper maybe. I just like to add that kind of a look to all my journals. I don't know why. I usually find a pretty page and then I layer it up over the top and I just like how it looks. Then a page from a wildflower book and then the colors of that page vary depending on the colors in each particular journal that I have going on. Then a piece of stationery, a smaller piece, and this has um, Monet's water lilies. Isn't that pretty? And I had just enough. I had exactly 10. Wasn't that great? Then a brown uh, note, notebook paper. And then this one, and this may be one that I change out. This is typing paper, a fine typing paper. Then a page from How to Draw Botanicals book. So again, the colors of each one vary depending on what was in the signature and the cover and stuff. But they all they all have um, something botanical. And then this one is just a plain sheet of typing paper. It's thinner, but it's in kind of that ivory color. And so what I thought I would do to each one of these is add one of these postalettes and also some of these stationary pages, boy I can't talk, stationary pages that Peggy sent. So this one's more of a post-a-note, post-a-note, post-a-let. So I thought I would do that and then also somewhere in each one I will be adding one of Laura's photographs, the photograph that Laura sent me. I'll be adding one of those pages somewhere in each journal and that may change up depending on how each how each journal is coming together. Now these she made kind of a pretty border of clouds. It's this these clouds here and then she made it into a background and then um I expanded the image. She had it going portrait and I made it go landscape so it would fit. So that when I fold it you would get something in each each half of the signature. 
um, but I do want to either tear or go down with my deco edge ruler and get rid of the outside edge. So um, that will take some time. I don't think I'm going to add those right now, but I do plan to do that. So next time you see these, they will have the vellum sheet in there. And I think that that will probably wind up replacing this one here or possibly this one here because I basically have two sheer pages in there. And then I think the stationary pages and postalettes could replace maybe this, but I do want to put them in the center of the signature too. So if it replaces that, it would go in as the middle of the signature. These signatures, I'm trying to remember how many pages I wound up with. So I've got one, two, three. I count this as a full page because it's it's a unique object. And it's good, it's pretty big size. So that was three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So if I replace one of the sheer pieces with that, that's still 18, and then add a postalette in the center, that's 19. That's 19 sheets. And then just depending, I've got one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, but she had some that were red. I gotta go grab the red ones. Hang on a second. And everything that I've gotten so far, I put in this little tub. And you've seen what I've gotten so far in the last video that I did. But Peggy had I can't help it. I organize things by height. See, these can also be pages, as can these, but they can also be ephemera. Hmm, hold on. <clears throat> I'm not going to make those pages just yet. I want to see how this works out first. Okay, here's some blue. I think the smaller ones of these work better as ephemera to tuck inside. But there were red ones. Where are you? Here they are. Here they are. So there's this one that had red and this one that had red. And these are handmade paper, so they could act as a page. And then I could put a um, I could put a envelope, glue it to the other side or something. Oh, plant seeded paper. Oh, these are those ones that have like you plant the paper and then there's seeds embedded in it and it will grow theoretically. I have some. <laughs> well, I have a little piece that I'm supposed to plant that I never did. These flowers need sun to sprout, grow, and bloom to about six to eight inches. Well, you're not going to get planted. <laughs> you're going to get sewn in. Alrighty, so that's what we've got. So let's, um, as we go through, and evaluate. I probably way overthink how I put my signatures together, but that's, I, I was just born that way. <laughs> born to overthink. Okay, so this one, for instance, the outside image was blue and yellow, and I don't have very many that have blue. And so, one with a blue kind of emphasis, like either this little guy, he's so cute, or one of these, although these would be nice to tuck into pockets. Same as these, because they're smaller. You're smaller. Let's save the littler ones for tucking in. Sorry, sniffly. Okay, so I was talking in the last video about, about how it's getting dark outside. So there are clouds and then below the cloud layer is smoke. So it's looking kind of gloomy. I mean, it looks like fall out there, but it's 78 degrees, so it doesn't feel like fall and it smells like acrid smoke. So when you go out, you kind of cough and choke a little bit. 
So I am thinking, who do I like in the middle? They're all so pretty. I don't want to debate too long. Quick, 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 Marcy, don't be deliberating too long. Well, I want something with some blue and yellow. Let me look for him again. Because he's definitely got the blue. Um, we're just going to do it. Let's not deliberate. He's got the most blue, and I think this one, if I change my mind, I can always come back and swap things out. The life, life will go on, correct? So that will lay in here like this, and then when I sew in the signature, it'll get sewn in here, and then I can either put a little thing, a little um, closure that catches this, or we can use a paper clip, or I could even just glue this shut and make it into a pocket, but it's nice to open it up and have all of the writing space. Okay, so that one's gonna go in the center of that. I'm just gonna lay it in there. And then here's, I numbered them. Here's his cover. This is the outside, and this is the inside. So, let's see, so I had how many of these? Four, five, six, seven. I still need to uh, work on how to decorate the covers too. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, in the absence or... I'm trying to think if I have any other stationery I can add. And I don't think I do, but I have these. I have these cards that could be used as pages. Not very many of them. These got from Michaels a while ago. They were pretty. But I don't need, I only need three, right? So the three can be um, the three can be the extra pages and then there's these cute envelopes. Aren't those cute? They look like CD envelopes. So I may or may not use those in these journals. I may save them for another project. Okay, so we decided the small ones are going to be ephemera, not pages. So I have put them back. Okay, so that's how that one looks. And okay, so as far as an extra sheet of stationery, I'm trying to get this so that you can see all these in frame so you can see what I'm picking. I don't think I have enough space. So I'll just have to bring the journals over one by one as I work on them. Like that. And then you can see everything I'm choosing from. I think this one would look really pretty in here, so let's let's add it somewhere that looks like it needs a little extra, a little extra something. For instance, we can add it like that. That's pretty color of paper too. When I stitch these. Because I have varying heights of papers, they're not all the same height, and some are a little bit smaller, I will probably do a five hole pamphlet stitch. I will not be demonstrating that on camera because I am hoping to work on them Friday night. So I'm starting something fun and new. I'm gonna talk to you while I work on these. Uh, something that I have been wanting to do for a while is resurrect my craft group. Do you guys remember me telling you at one point, I think I've mentioned it several times, that I used to be part of a scrapbook group. We met once a month and we'd work on our scrapbooking and stuff. Well, I've resurrected it at church and Friday night is the first night, but instead of it just being scrapbooking, it's gonna be open to anybody that has a craft that they love to do then they can come and work on it and we can all socialize. We'll bring snacks. Oh, let's see. That is so pretty. We'll bring snacks and um, just chat and work on our favorite things and maybe even learn some, um, learn some techniques from each other, which will be fun. 
So that's that's this Friday. So I'm hoping to work on sewing in journals, sewing in signatures. Okay, now I put that one in because it had a little bit of red right there and I'm going with the reds here, but I don't think that either of these cards would look very pretty there. So we're gonna keep looking. And I like, I like that page too. So you'll probably get kind of a good overview of each one of these as I flip through. Now this one is just a plain piece of paper and there's brown there. So I think it could use a little color. Those are roses. This is not a rose. But I'm leaning towards this one. So we're gonna do it. And then there's the music. Oh, I guess they didn't all have vellum, but they do all have this. <clears throat> so, okay. They all had some kind of sheet because I was going with random ones. So this one instead of the vellum has this brown sheet, which I could maybe swap. These were pages from that journal that I took apart that I showed you at the beginning when I was explaining this project. It was one that I won and I liked some of the things that she did, but um, I wanted to use it as an idea book and it, the pouch that they sent it in was too limiting to use, to, to make the, to allow the journal to grow and expand for an idea book. So we just didn't do it. Okay, that sheet is just kind of blah. I may end up putting it back where I had it, but oh. All right, putting that back the way I had it because this might look kind of cool. You can see that red through there and then there's a little bit of red right there. So maybe that's better. Maybe that's a better way to do it. I'm going with it. And then for this one, see that one had mushrooms right here. So we can do a mushroom one here in the brighter colors. Okay, there's that one. And then the outside of this cover looks like that. So that's tying in the red and then the green. I did figure out as I was doing this, I don't have very many neutral fabrics. Everything, <laughs> everything has a color. So that was making it hard to find coordinating colors for the insides of these journals. Okay, now this one has lots of softer, softer colors. So here's the outside, which was the inside on the first one I showed you, but it's the outside on this one. It's got some threads hanging off I'm gonna have to take care of. Um, but it has more like softer roses and, and uh, yellows, golds kind of thing. But because there's a little bit of green here, I use the green on the inside and see how all of a sudden the green leaves pop out, so it's kind of a neutral. All right, so flipping through, oh, upside down. Well, there we go. Well, let's put that on the right side then. Flipping through very quickly. See, this one has the gold. And here, this one has kind of an autumn scene. Here's our page we redid. Needlepoint book music. I'm gonna have to go through and um, cut down these center pages a little bit because they really do stick out. So I've got pink and blue here and then the yellow and blue. There's a little bit of red in there but it's because I had pink and blue and gold. It's kind of a little bit of everything. <laughs> There's that. So it's and then see here, my Ukrainian book page, I put it in the middle because of that image there. So maybe, oh, this would be a good place for one of these to go a little bit further back. And this could use some color. Oh, actually, let's put, one of these right here. Let's 
It's really pretty. Pretty stationary. You have some pretty things, Peggy. Thank you. You must have some really good thrifting where you live. But then, let's see. There's something that was striking my eye back here. I kind of want, let's see, how's the back look? I kind of want these happy little guys. I'm going to fold it the other way so that that shows up as you flip through. And now this is a page instead of being the center. And that's only because I want this book page to be the center on this one because it has that happy image on it. So now we've got the postalette and the stationery. So that one is done. Ugh. Sorry. <laughs> Terrible noise. <laughs> How much time have we taken already? 22 minutes. I wonder. I think I will finish the rest of this off camera, but you get the idea of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it that way. Uh, but I did want to show you how I made these journal covers. Let's see, I'm going to set these down. So let me grab one out as an example. I'll grab number four because I already did number four. I don't want to confuse myself with what I'm supposed to be doing. So this, this technique I did get from Gail Agostinelli. This is one of her older videos, I think from 2018. Okay, so what I did was I went through and I I found my pieces that I wanted to coordinate with basically the outside the outside image and as I'm staring at that right now, I'm looking at it thinking I like that side of the page to be at the beginning. It will still go. Well, this will be the outside, but um the inside is neutral. This is about the only neutral I had was those it's very whimsical too. So there's that. But what we did on this, this is a padded cover and it's made from a nine by 12 mailing envelope. And essentially I laid down the envelope and some padding and the fabric. This needs to be trimmed better. And lined it and sewed it all in a zigzag. And right now I'm gonna show you how I did that. <laughs> Set those guys aside. So here's my nine by 12. These, um, these are blank. You can use any old nine by 12. Like if you get on, got one in the mail that you wanna reuse, you can do that. Now somewhere I read in a comment on somebody's something or other that if you put something crinkly in the middle, it makes a fun crunch sound. Hear that? We all love our crunch. So I put in pieces of that Amazon packing paper. It's already all scrunched up. It's pretty much the right size. At least to give you a good crunch. It's almost, it fills up the envelope pretty nicely. And then, just so it didn't really move around in there, I don't know if this is necessary, but it makes me feel good. I put in some Elmer's glue to tack it down. There we go. And then, you want to down the flap. I found it easier to crease the flap first and then do the gluing because it was easier to lay down with the glue on it if it already had a crease going in it. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> There's no need for all of that yelling. I don't have a wet wipe. I just have a dry paper towel, so I guess we'll use that. Then you just tack the flap shut and you've got your little piece of paper in there to give it some crinkle. And it's really nice. Now, she just used a little bit of glue stick. I wrote myself some notes over here. Uh, I've been, I was using the Fabri-Tac, but she just did this 
and tacked, tacked her next layer down, which was a layer of batting of some sort. Now this is a quilt batting that I received. Uh, it was, I was helping clean out the stuff for children's program downstairs at our church. And this was in one of the closets. So I got to bring the whole roll home. Um, that was fortuitous because, okay, now you're just gonna lay this down, tack it on there. I cut these all a little big so I'd have room to work with. And then you trim it to the size of your envelope. Anyway, I got a whole roll and it's pretty good stuff. It's double, si uh, double thickness on the roll. It's been folded in half so that you can do a large quilt with it or whatever. So when my friend Kimberly came, she's, uh, my mom hired her to redo some old quilts that my grandma made back in the 30s. And all we had were the quilt tops. And so because I had that batting on the roll, we were able to not have to pay for, <laughs> for batting, which was nice, and sent a big bunch of it home with Kimberly. And so that batting is now gonna be in my mama's quilts that my grandma made. And then she had three tops. And um, one of her sisters had a few more. And so if we can get those, that would be great because her daughter doesn't care one iota about anything family or anything old or anything like that. So. Hopefully we can get those too, but that way my, they're my mom's now and then um, they will get passed on to me and my two daughters. So we'll have antique quilts by the time we get them, which is a treasure. Okay, so you got your padded layer laid down and then you want to, since this is, I'm putting the padding on the outside, then you want to lay this down on your outside fabric. I'm turning this around so I can see. And this is a good time to add the Fabri-Tac. And um, you just kind of need to tack it. Now my Fabri-Tac is at the end of its of its bottle pretty much so it's not coming out a lot <laughs> but it's coming out enough I hope to tack this down just basically to get the two fabrics to stick. I suppose you could pin them or something. I suppose you could probably just use any old glue too. And then the way I did it was I laid it down so there was about a half an inch sticking out. You want to have enough to stick out and cover everything but when you come back to trim it, you want enough to trim off. I mean, you want to be able to have room to sew and then room to trim. And this doesn't run straight, so I want it to be about a half inch from this shortest shortest uh, section here where there's not as much room. So about half an inch all the way around. Oh, now the glue comes out. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. And you don't want it to, you really don't want it to leave it in big globs because then it goes through the fabric and it looks, it looks bad, it looks clumpy. So then I trimmed about a half inch out. How many centimeters is that? Does anyone know? I don't know. All I know is inches. So anyway, about a half inch that much. <laughs> Looking, I don't have a ruler with centimeters on it at all in, in my near vicinity, but that much. It doesn't have to be pretty because you're gonna do the pretty trimming after it's all sewn together. And then you save your scraps to do something fun with. I wanted to keep with a half inch measurement because then when I sew, I'm gonna go in at about five eighths of an inch and it'll just catch See right here where there's a half inch? Then it'll just catch right along the edge of that, of that envelope. And you wanna sew slowly because you just wanna make sure that you're catching the envelope and the fabric so it doesn't move around. I won't demo the sewing. I know I say this every time, but 
Maybe you're new, maybe you don't know this. I won't demo the sewing because it shakes the camera too much. Okay, so that's my outside cover. You can feel the poofiness, you can hear the crunch. Now the inside piece, first of all, we need a little glue. Um, I guess I could do it with the glue stick, because that is what Gail did. And then I'm going to get a different... Here. This Fabri-Tac is a little more full, so we'll go with this one. This is actually the one I refilled a smaller one with. So, Sorry if there's an elbow on the screen. Elbow arm. So I'm just giving it a little bit of a light tack right in the middle, not where I'm going to sew. Because as we know, glue and sewing needles, machine needles, do not mix. Now, if your pattern is directional, this one kind of is, you want to make sure that your um, patterns, oops, sorry, that your patterns are going the same way. I'm going to focus on this rose because I think I want that to be my front. If I turn it this way, it looks upside down. But the other ones look fine, but if I turn it this way, this one looks right side up. And they all look a little upside down, so you're not going to win. I think actually because the pattern goes like that. <laughs> That's why. But this will be my front, so I'm going to go with that one. And so when I put on my inside piece, if it is also directional, as this one can be, you want to make sure that your directions match up. That your patterns line up and are all going the same direction so they don't have the top on this end on one side and then the top on this end on down here on the other end <laughs> when you t when you open up your journal does that make sense that was poorly explained essentially make sure that the up is always towards the top no matter which side you're working from and then you won't have any problem now see that doesn't really stick so try again Oh, well that's not taking off the cap, that's taking or the lid, it's taking off the whole the whole thing. Let's try this again. I'm hurrying because I don't want this video to be forever long. For heaven's sake. Um so we're we're gonna pause for a quick break while I get this out. All right, well, that was a lot more uh, involved than it really needed to be. <laughs> finally, <laughs> finally, we can get the glue out of the bottle. Now, in the middle of that, it kind of went all over, and um, I just have discovered that the glue stick didn't really stick, doesn't, isn't going to work. Now, maybe yours will, but this one didn't. It's the purple. Uh, it didn't really stick. And that turned out to be a good thing because when the glue finally came out of the bottle and went all over and I was trying to fiddle with things, then it dried and it was making a big um, lumpy mess. So the fact that the, that the padding and the top layer didn't stick here like it should have is actually a blessing because that meant I could turn it over and hide the lumpy mess. You don't really want those lumps through the fabric because you'll be able to feel them and see them, but since this has the padding under it, now you won't. Okay, back to where we were. This is going to be up. We're not gonna use glue stick. We know that that doesn't work. And I'm just gonna put an easy bit of Fabri-Tac around inside of where we'll be stitching, but um, you know, so the sewing machine doesn't get it, but not, not all globby everywhere so that it soaks up through the fabric because Fabri-Tac is bad about that. If you really want to, you can take a spreader and spread it, but I think it'll be okay because it's around the outside edge. This particular pattern, which I think is what I was trying to tell you before we got, <laughs> before we took our station break, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it kind of can go any direction based on how all the little characters are going. So it can go pretty much any direction I need it to go. So I'm just going to line up the edges here as much as possible and then make sure that you get all the wrinkles smoothed out. i got still got glue gloves going. You still want that little half inch of overhang approximately. 
I'm going with half inch because it's easy to to do the um, sewing at five eighths of an inch, so that works for me. Okay, we're gonna trim. I suppose you could trim all this nicely and neatly together all at once. That, and then you would just be able to lay it down. But I don't have. I don't. Um, you know, if you were a quilter and you could just use the wheel, that would be a great way to just roll and cut, but I don't really have that expertise. <laughs> I'm challenged. I don't really have the stuff either to do that, so. I don't know if I, if, can I do that on this mat? Does anyone know? The rotary mat? I don't know. Maybe I can, maybe I can use one of those cutting wheels on this mat, but it came with cuts in it, so I'm guessing that whoever was using it tried that. Okay, so here's the inside and here's the outside. So now I'm going to go sew and I have about a half an inch of overhang. The nice thing on this fabric is I can see the outline of the edge of the envelope so I will know where to sew but on a thicker fabric or a darker fabric you can't tell that very well. So I just kind of go slowly and I kind of finger crease it right along the edge so I can give myself a guideline and then feed it through, okay? So I'm gonna sew and I will be right back. Okay, I did sew this along the, just inside the edge of the envelope here. So when I pull this back, you can see just a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is go just outside the edge of the envelope, I'm gonna trim right along that edge and I'm gonna go very carefully and this one's nice because you can see like I said you can see through this thinner fabric where you're supposed to be so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this real quick okay finish that up I had a little bit here to straighten out, so I did that really quick. So that's what it looks like. I like the look with the pinking shears. Um, it helps it to not fray. If you wanted the straight edge or a ripped or torn edge, what Gail did in her video was she ran a bead of glue right along inside here before she trimmed it. So that would hold everything in place. Since I have the zigzag stitch, that will keep the fraying from going into the cover. But this is how it looks. So there's the outside. It's all padded and crinkly. And here's the inside. This is number seven. So I will mark it. I'm just trying to keep all my pieces together because you know, doing this many at once, it's easy to get off track. So that's number seven. Now up to this point, I have done all of these the same way. And I'm looking for a clip, but I don't have any more here. So I'll just set this over here. I've been doing all of them the same way, but there's another method you can also use. So let's get out a new envelope. New bit of padding. And the new new journal combination there. So the other way that you can do this is a um, little bit a little bit different obviously. Let's go ahead and tack down this piece inside. Okay so we're gonna lay down the flap, smooth it out. I forgot to mention the first time if you have the clasp pull it out. I think you probably noticed that there. So what we do on the first one Got to think through this for a second. Okay, we want it. We want it to be padded. So that horrible moment when you were afraid you weren't actually recording. <laughs> I just had it. Okay, gonna lay down our batting. And trim around it. Okay, 
then we take our outside fabric and I believe this is my outside piece and this is my inside piece. Yep, yep. So my outside piece, I'm gonna lay down. And as you noticed, I cut all of these. This is another piece of information I should have told you at the beginning and neglected to mention. I cut all of these about an inch or so extra all the way around so that I could play around with pattern arrangement or whatever I needed to do so that I had lots of room to work with in terms of cutting and um, on this one it'll be even more important because we're going to fold our sides in. So um, yeah, so you just want to remember if this is a 9 by 12 and you want to put another inch on either side, of, this is 12, so 13, 14 inches this way. And then 9 plus another inch, 10 plus another inch, 11. So at least 11 by 14. You can cut it a little bit bigger even if you want. Just to make sure you have enough to lay down and get it positioned where you want it, okay? So I'm going to put down my glue just a little bit. Let's hope. This uh, batting gets stuck on the Fabri-Tac nozzle and then it makes like this little mess of fibers and glue which you then get to wipe off okay so you can spread it out using one of these silicone things you just don't want the glue to be all globby under there because it will um, it leaves lumps and it it leaves marks on the other side of on the fabric you know it bleeds through but then it bleeds through it looks spotty Okay, why did I use my fingers for that? That was silly. Anyway. So now we're gonna lay it down. I'm a ways away from me, but I hope you guys can see this okay. And I'm seeing this pattern here, which I kind of want to center this somewhere to grab both parts of that. Okay, but I need at least an inch all the way around. My hands are wet, so it left a little, little mark there. My hands are wet from that wet paper towel. <laughs> okay, so now what we do, I'm going to trim off a little bit of that excess because I don't need all of it. So on this particular method, what we're going to do is uh, fold this to the inside. Ooh, I forgot to cover my glue stick. It's been open for a while. We're gonna run a line of glue along, and you can run it in here, or you can just run it along the edge of your fabric. That way you know you've got it in the right spot. But you do want to avoid this outside edge where you're gonna be sewing. Just pull it in. Pull it in. Did I ever finish what I was saying about the weather? The clouds and the smog and the smoke. Did I ever start what I was saying about the weather? <laughs> My sniffing made me think of that. Yeah, I'm just piggybacking off of the video I made the other day, so. <clears throat> the weather's still the same, it's just an hour or so later. Okay, there's that. Now the corners are the tricky part, so I'm kind of saving them for last. Don't want you to get stuck. Okay, so we're going to... Oh, I was supposed to trim those. You do it just like you do your corners on your paper. So you're supposed to come in at a bit of an angle there. And a bit of an angle here. And then fold them in. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Am I in frame? Yes, I am. Okay. Easier if you do that before you start the gluing. <laughs> 
Okay, and then you want to pull this in tight enough, which I did not do right there. Get all your wrinkles out, which I'm not did not do. There we go. Okay, so is there still glue there? No. So on the other end, we'll we'll do better. I promise. I'll fold this in. And it gives you a little bit of a nice tight corner there. Now we're gonna do the same over here. So yes, remember to do this step before. I mean, you can fold it, but like bring it in and lay it down and then fold it over itself, which is a nice method too. It just makes it really thick right here, and then when you're trying to sew around, you've got all these layers, so. Um, I usually do that when I'm working with paper, especially if it's a thinner paper. I find that method works really well to get a good corner, and then um, you don't have the piece underneath showing. Because when I'm working with paper, very often, the corner of whatever you're trying to cover sticks through right here. But when you're working with fabric, it's a little bit different, and it's more flexible and forgiving and folds better. Oh, I didn't do you. <laughs> Did all that demoing and forgot to do what I'm supposed to be doing. There we go. Okay, you go in there. Get the wrinkles out. You don't want the wrinkles because you're going to be laying another layer on top and sewing it and so the wrinkles will just show through and I have a wrinkle so that's gonna really be bugging me come on so I guess if you just have to pick it up and try again that's what you do okay now you know Gail does this so much nicer and neater than I do but oh well <laughs> say la vie Okay, so we're pulling it in. Oh, that wasn't attached, that's good. Okay, and it's best to do that, like I said, before you glue, so you don't get your sewing scissors all gluey. And now, I've got all these little threads, so I kind of want them out of the way. Now you take your interior fabric, which ideally would be trimmed exactly to the right size, but mine isn't, of course. And again, making sure that your pattern, if it's directional, that you have it going the way that you want it. So this is gonna be my front. And this is another one of those that looks upside down and right side, right side up. It looks correct and incorrect simultaneously, no matter which direction you have it. So anyway, we're gonna call this up. Up is that way. And then um, I'm going to lay this down. And now I'm probably gonna wish I hadn't written, put that arrow on there because it's probably gonna show through. Okay. So we're going to very lightly, right around, just right below where we're gonna sew we're gonna glue. If you were going to add pockets or anything to the inside, whether it went along the bottom or up the sides, you would sew those to this piece first before you lay this down, okay? If you are going to add a tie and you want it sewn in and you're gonna put a tie in here you would lay it down glue it and then go over it with the sewing but then you have to remember not to cut through that tie when you're trimming up this piece I like to make mine bigger and then do the trimming up because I just feel like I get a neater product and I can get the dimensions 
right, that the fabric is um, the right size because I've cut it down. It's kind of like upholstery, you know? <laughs> Got a little glue on my nozzle there. So I'm gonna stick it in the middle where the stitching will be so it shouldn't show. Okay, and then you wanna get all your wrinkles out, pull it straight. Okay, then you're going to take it to your sewing machine and sew. You can either trim it now if you want before you sew or you can trim it after you sew. I'm going to trim it after I sew and I will be right back. And with the magic of editing, I am back with it all sewn together and trimmed up. So here's the outside, a nice puffy, lovely, I'm going to call that outside up, I have to keep remembering this, <laughs> nice puffy, lovely, soft, it's not super puffy actually, soft, um, and lovely crinkle, and then inside it looks like this, but you can see how the edges, it just gives it a different look to be sewn and folded over on the from the outside and then have this laid down and trimmed from the inside versus this one where they're both trimmed together and this is not folded over. So you can see from in here, you can see the little envelope. If you do not have a sewing machine, you don't have to sew these. If you don't like to sew, you don't have to sew these. You do the same process that I showed you, except everything is with glue. And this one actually would work really well with glue, with the folding it over and then laying it down and trimming the edges, because that way everything is sealed regardless. Your edges are all covered, because you've covered this, you folded this piece in and covered it, right? If you choose to do this method, which honestly, slightly easier but not really much difference between the two you would lay down your outside piece with your layer of batting underneath i also meant to mention if you don't have batting that's fine you can use felt anything that's got a little bit of thickness to it and in fact i want to show you this one down here i wanted to show you this one because see this one i did wrong and so I took out the middle piece, I've redone the inside. But what is under here is a layer of uh, packing insulation from like frozen food. And it had a, a layer of foam. Now when I first did it, that foam was pretty thick and it looks like it's finally smooshed down. I shoved it in a box for a long time and I got it out the other day to look at it and I was like, oh, this isn't as thick as I remember. So anything with some uh, depth or softness to it, you can stick underneath your fabric to give it that padding, uh, okay? And then um, if, you're, if you decide to glue, then once you have that layer and this layer, the outside layer with the padding laid down, you're gonna wanna want to run a thin bead of glue just inside the edge of the envelope, Be and then put your glue down on here like you would, and lay down your piece and just kind of seal it. It adds a seal around the edge of the envelope so that everything is in place. So you can do that instead of gluing or instead of sewing and everything will stay inside and then do your trimming down. I hope that made sense. I'm not demonstrating it because I don't, um, I'm running out of time on this video, but I can demonstrate it another time if you're interested in seeing seeing how to glue the fabric cover together instead of sewing it, just let me know and we will do that. Another alternative after you are making your journal covers, you, you're gonna have scraps. And so I put together some of the scraps from these and just did kind of a patchy one. This one's not covered on the inside yet. And I, um, there's two ways. I went ahead and sewed it. I sewed around these different squares to the envelope. That gave each one of these pieces kind of a puffy padded feel of its own. 
but you could sew all these pieces together in one layer and then lay them over the padding and not stitch through the envelope and the fabric like I did here. Because this will leave, you'll feel that through the uh, layer. When I put the next layer inside, you know, you'll be able to feel that a little bit. It won't be terrible, but anyway, that's um, another option. Just do your patchwork look. And then here, these don't quite meet, and here this isn't quite straight, so when I decorate it up, this is going to be the front. And I'll just cover those with bits of lace and some doily or whatever. But I have really been um, investigating the idea of having journal covers pre-made and having your journal toppers pre-made so that when you get ready to put together a journal or you have pages or if you're one who uses a digital kit, you can just have a lot of these pieces ready to go. And because your style is your style, because your preferences are your preferences, I don't think there's really any worry as to whether or not they're going to match because you're always going to be picking the things that you like and you enjoy. So the next step I'm going to do is take lace and run them up the edges and you can glue the lace. You can go back over it with sewing if you wish. Um, I think what I want to do, because I didn't add the ties, I can either go ahead and add them now and still sew them down on the insides. I can still add those ties and sew them in, but you'll see the piece when you lay it down. This is not one I'm going to actually use, but I'm showing you for demo purposes. <laughs> when I lay the tie down and sew it in place, you are going to see this little end in here, which is why if you don't want to see that, then you would tack it in between the two layers before you glue and finally sew. But the sewing gives it some extra insurance that this isn't going to pull out. So I, I like that security, knowing that it's not going to come apart when somebody's pulling on their journal. Okay, so I hope that helped, helped explain a couple of different ways to do the journal covers. Use these ideas and piggyback off of them and make something for yourself, you know, just be inspired and do something creative, which is my tagline and how I close. But first, let's go ahead and do our quote of the day. Today's quote comes to us from Helen Keller, and it says, Character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through experience of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, vision cleared, ambition inspired, and success achieved. All right, I'm going to give you a minute to chew on that. But that is it for today, folks. I appreciate you hanging out with me, and I really appreciate it when you comment and let me know what you think or if you have ideas or maybe you have a better way of doing these. I'd love to hear that, okay? So until next time, everyone, be inspired and do something creative today, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.